Hey guys, welcome in. I got a good message for those of you who are going through trials and things that are really hard in your life. And I want to talk about how these things have a purpose. Uh, when we're following God, when we're chosen of God, we're going to be put through the fire because there are things that only the fire can do. Like you can, you know, you can use soap and water and you can wash yourself in certain ways, but impurities got to be burned out sometimes you know and I know this is true in my life pride um, fears uh, fear of man fear of death um, you know pride vanity um, shoot a lot of things <laughs> you know a lot of a lot of things uh, really need to be burned out and purged out um, so I just want to I want to show you how in scripture God is constantly speaking about this principle and I know that for me it really relates to my life and the people that are going through the gang stalking like like there's a purpose in all of it trust like it really there really is a um, a strong purpose in it so let me just read some scripture to start this off uh, Zechariah 13 and 9 says, And I will bring the third part through the fire, refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, They are my people, and they will say, The Lord is my God. Um, so, I want to talk about and related to um, how God refines us through trials. So I have here, sorry, I have another paper here that I wanted to read off of. It says in Malachi three three, He will sit as a refiner and a and a purifier of silver. So a refiner removes impurities or unwanted elements. Um, from a substance. So to be refined is to be like, you know, proofed, tested, uh, upgraded, you know, that kind of deal. So when gold is found like fresh out of the ground, it has to go through a process of refinement for it to be purified. You know, you have like raw gold and then you have refined gold that is sold for a lot, a lot more value. So it's like, you know, the, initial find of the gold it has potential value but it has to be refined it has to be put through the fire <laughs> you know to be purified and it's the same with us it's like you know we have immense value to god but there's impurities in our heart you know so it's like there's another verse that says uh that the crucible is for silver and gold but the Lord tests the heart, right? So it's correlating, um, you know, the crucible, which is what the gold is put into. It's like the, um, it's the thing that is placed into the fire or the fire underneath that holds the gold, right? And then, pu and then it purifies. So the process basically is like heat is added to, um, added under or upon the crucible and then the impurities come up and you can take out the impurities or they're burnt away or they're left um, separated from the metal so i'm not an expert in these things but i can see how um, the the concept really relates to how god works through our trials right and it's a good thing it really is it's it's not it's not a good thing from our point of view when we're going through it because you know <laughs> the trials are hard like no one likes to go through trials but the trials are necessary to get where god wants us to be to be free from these impurities right and so i hope this is making sense uh psalm 66 10 and 12 for you god tested us you refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through the fire and water, but you brought us into a place of abundance. So, 
the psalmist is correlating, not correlating, but he's pointing to what God has done, right? He's tested him and refined him like silver. So he, he noticed, he, he can look back and notice how God was doing this. And none of this sounds good, right? He says, you brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs, right? So that sounds terrible. <laughs> and you let people ride over our heads. You know, basically it was like, you let people uh, rule over us and tell us what to do and be in command over us. Put us into prison and laid heavy burdens on our backs. He says, we went through the fire and water, but you have brought us out into a place of abundance. So the abundance came after the trials, right? After the refinement. So he's looking back, standing in a place of abundance and saying, okay, God, I see your hand was in that. And so though those things aren't um, fun to go through, it's for an outcome. And this is how God always disciplines us. I've talked about this in, always, in, uh, in my last videos is like, God is disciplining us in ways to look forward to what it's bringing. It's not to punish us from uh, what's behind us. It's always forward looking. So it's for wisdom. It's for purity in this case in refinement. It's for purity. It's for things to come out away from us. So it says in 1 Peter 4.12, it says, uh, Belove, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. So again, the fiery trial comes upon you to test you. It says, do not be surprised at that as if though something strange were happening to you. So it's a normal thing. Like, like I said, if you're chosen, you're going to go through the fire because you need the results of the fire. And so I was, I was just looking up um, just more about the process. Um, and I didn't go super into depth, but I got... Um, basically another another woman was uh, looking up the same thing in reference to like what the Bible talks about she wanted to understand the refinement process process so I found this little short um, story of what what she looked into how she did it she called uh, a silversmith and was like hey can I come watch you work like I just wanted to see the process of what you go through so this was someone who like it says in um, Malachi 3.3, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of, a sil of silver. So this was a person that does that. And she said, hey, can I come watch you work? And he's like, yeah, come on, come through. She didn't tell him why or anything. She just wanted to go there, like no questions asked, and just be like, uh, and watch, and then see if she needed to ask him anything. So, so she went to watch this guy work. And so one thing she noticed, uh, the silversmith had held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. So purposefully took the silver and put it over the flames. The silversmith explained to her that in refining silver, one needed to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames were the hottest, right? So he didn't just put it like on the side, he put it into the, the hottest point. Um, and the reason for this is to burn away all the impurities. So like if you don't go all the way into the fire, it's like you're only getting part of it out and you're prolonging the process, right? So in this story, it's like God is the silversmith. And that's why it's referenced over and over uh, in the Bible that God is the refiner. And... If you, if you haven't heard the song, uh, there's a song called The Refiner, right? Or Refiner by, I think it's Maverick City. And it's a really good song, fire song, but uh, no pun intended. Uh, and that just kind of talks more about the process. But anyways, back to my story. Sorry, guys, there's a lot to this, but I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> um, so it says, the woman thought about God holding us. Uh, in such a hot spot, then she thought again about the verse that says, He sits as a refiner and purifier of silver. That's Malachi 3.3. 3. She asked the silversmith if it was true 
that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. So she noticed he didn't move from like the spot. So he's sitting there like watching over it, just like God does. Like God is in our, in our trials watching over us. So the trials play, play a part. The fire, we're being forged by fire because only the fire can do it. So the silver, silversmith answered yes. Not only uh, did he have to sit there holding the silver, so he's sitting there holding it, right? Holding it, watching it. Um, but he also had to keep his eyes on the silver the entire time it was in the fire. Like, he, his eyes didn't leave it. He's sitting there holding it. He's watching over it. Um, because it's important. He said, if the silver was left a moment, one moment too long in the flames, it would be destroyed. So it'd be no good. So he's bringing it to a brink of either being purified completely or basically being burnt up and destroyed. Which is, uh, <laughs> in my experience, um, exactly the, the length that God has gone uh, in my life to have me purified from certain things. And I, I'm only laughing because it's like, I mean, I, there was times where I thought I was going to die. I had to accept dying at some points, but it's like I can see God like purged certain things from me and purified it. Um, so the woman was thinking about what he said, right? How, he, you know. Basically, he, it's this fine line between it being purified and destroyed. Then she asked, well, how do you know when the silver is fully refined? And this is crazy, right? The silversmith responded. He said, oh, that's easy. He says, when I can see my image in it. So that's the goal, right? That God, God wants these trials the furnace of affliction, these fiery trials, to purify us in a way that when he looks at our heart, he sees his image, he sees his reflection. So it's meant to leave us pure, right? That's the outcome. You know, when we let God have his perfect work in us, God should see our reflection at the end of them. So he's with us. Uh, in the trials, his hands are on us, he's watchful, and he's precise about what he allows and what he doesn't. And when you realize this, you can trust him in the, in the process. And that's why it's saying um, in another verse, I don't have it written down, but it says uh, that we should rejoice in our trials because of, the, of what it produces, right? So... I have a couple more, couple more um, verses to talk about. So, First Peter, one seven says, "So that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ." So. That's the purifying fire, right? That produces a faith that's more precious than gold. And also I wanted to uh, talk about when gold is refined and pure, pure, it's soft. It's soft and malleable, right? It's moldable and shapeable, right? And so when these trials have done their work in our hearts, our heart's soft and pliable like God. We're, our heart isn't hardened by sin. It's not hardened by pride. It's not hardened by rebellion. Like it's softened, right? And then, and then we're really able to move with God in certain ways, right? Because our heart is soft towards Him. Like it's soft in His hands, and He can, He can, He can move it. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so. I have a couple more scriptures. Zechariah 13, 8 and 9, it says, it, come, uh, it will come about in the land, declares the Lord, that two parts in it will be cut off and perish. So, 
uh, it says, but the third will be left in it. And I will bring the third part through the fire and refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. That's what he's done for me, you guys. And this is this is my point. Like, even though my process has been very hard and if you're chosen, you guys can relate with all the trials and the things that there it's so hard it's so it's so hard to go through but it's for a result like it's meant to test and refine us so that we turn to god right and sometimes the burden is so heavy that we're like we're not supposed to be carrying that like so you're either going to turn to god or i mean how long do you want to put up with that stuff on your own strength in your own strength yeah, so I don't get it. I don't I don't get the people that won't turn to God like even though it's so bad, it's like it's it's crazy. Um so Jeremiah six, twenty seven and thirty, I have made you an assayer and a tester among my people. So an assayer is a person or a company that tests a metal to find out how pure it is. So God has sent uh a group of people to be that tester right so this is a this is like this is a trial that he's talking about um, he says all of them are stubbornly rebellious going about as a talebearer they are bronze and iron they all of them are corrupt the bellows blow fiercely the lead is consumed by the fire in vain the refining goes on but the wicked are not separated so like his goal was to separate the wicked, you know, the impurities. But they weren't heeding the lessons. They weren't they weren't learning from the trials, right? So that's what that's speaking about. Daniel 12:10. This one's cool. It says, "Many will be purged, purified, and refined, but the wicked will act wick wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand." But those who have insight will understand. And that's what I'm saying. Like when God gives you insights, like you can see, you can see how all this is necessary. But if you remain stubborn and stiff neck and stay in your wicked ways, like you won't understand it. You'll play the victim. You'll be blaming everyone. You won't see uh, what, what God wants you to do it, do through it. see if there's any more I wanted to uh, just more as uh, so this this is one that I wanted to bring up so this is God speaking in Isaiah 1 and 25 he says I will also turn my hand against you and I will smelt away your dross as with lie and I will remove all your alloy so dross or dross I don't know how you say it but that's the uh, the rubbish impurities and same with alloy is like the impure metals uh, in the precious metals so he says I will turn my hand against you so, so so some of these things that happen to us is actually God doing it to refine us and even if it's not doing it, him doing it directly, he's allowing us to be going through. No, I'm doing a video. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, anyways, I think that's good enough. Hopefully, you get the point. Um... We need to go through trials for the outcome, right? And so if we can trust God through them, that he's with us and he's working, and this is uh, easier said than done, but now I can look back at how God was faithful in all those times, even when, like I said, I had to accept dying. And it was like, it looked like God was not working. It really did. It was like, like I thought, <laughs> I thought I'd went too far. I thought, I thought it was over. Uh, yet 
God, God showed me. He said, so there's one point where Jesus is talking to Peter, and you have to look up the address, but he says, Peter was very prideful and he was very um, self-confident, right? And basically Jesus had told them that he was, um, he was going to deny him. Uh, several times and Peter's like no that's not me you got you got me confused like this is God telling him this right and Peter's like that no I won't I won't do that and then um, he ended up doing it obviously and then at one point Jesus tells him he's like um, he's like Simon Peter he's like Satan has asked to sift you like wheat Right, so that means like separated, to sift is to like separate, so separated, separate him and pull him apart. He says, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. So when you come back, strengthen your brothers. So that's what has happened to me too. It's like, you know, everything, as long as his faith didn't fail, he failed. Uh, his self-confidence, his pride, everything had f failed him except for like Jesus had prayed for his faith not to fail him because that's the only time that you're really on a strong foundation is when you're on when you're on Christ. Not on your own strength, not on your self-confidence, none of that. So yeah, I wasn't planning on saying that, but that's what I got. I hope you guys got something out of this message. Let me know. See you on the next one.